and we'll get going in a minute. I'll let you know when, you should be able to see when folks stream in, but I'll let you know. Welcome everyone. We are so excited to have you here this afternoon for our student panel focusing on applying early decision to Northwestern. We will wait just a few moments for everyone to join us and then we will get started. Thanks for being here. All right, we'll go ahead and begin. Um, thank you so much again for joining us for today's webinar. Um, we can't see you, of course, but we hope you can see all of us. We are very excited to introduce you to Northwestern if you are new. Um, and for most of you who are have done some research and are really considering whether or not to apply under our early decision plan, um, welcome back to engaging with Northwestern and to learning a little bit more. Um, you are welcome to communicate with us via the chat or the Q&A. You should have access to both features. And we will do our best today to get through as many of your questions as possible. But we're going to begin with a round of introductions and then some general questions for our amazing student panelists about their college searches and their decision to apply to Northwestern as early decision candidates just a few years ago. So to begin, my name is Valerie Smith. I use she, her pronouns. I'm an associate director of admission at Northwestern. Um, and my job today is to give you as much insight as I can about the early decision admission process. So I'll speak generally to that in a few minutes, but first I'd like you to hear from our amazing current students. So Taylor, would you like to kick us off with introductions? Yeah, hi guys, I'm Taylor. I am a senior, I use she, her pronouns. I'm from New York City and I study communication studies, entrepreneurship and the integrated marketing certificate. And I'm gonna pass it off to Jasmine. Hi everyone, my name is Jasmine. I'm you, she, they pronouns. I am currently a senior or fourth year uh, from Sioux Falls, South Dakota and I am just studying chemical engineering. I will kick it off to Raga. Hi everyone, my name is Raghav. I am a second year studying journalism and international studies. I use he, him pronouns, and I currently live in Long Grove, Illinois, which is around 40 minutes from Evanston, but I've also lived in Atlanta, uh, Singapore, and Switzerland. Uh, I'll pass it off to Alyssa. Hi everyone, my name is Alyssa. I am a senior. I am currently majoring in communication studies, minoring in psychology, as well as getting our IMC certificate, and I am born and raised in Chicago. And I'll pass it off to Chloe. Hi everyone, my name is Chloe. I'm a senior. I use she, her pronouns. Really from Los Angeles, California, and I'm studying political science, black study, sociology, and also doing the IMC certificate. All right, great. I think we got everyone. Uh, jump in if I missed you. We're so happy to have this group here. They are such an, they have so many exciting stories to share about Northwestern. And they're such a talented and energized group. Um, so their time uh, is, is a valuable add to you this evening. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to start by giving just an introduction to what the early decision admission process is, what that round looks like, the basics that you need to know moving forward. And then I, I'll in, invite our panelists to speak a little bit about their college search. So if early decision is a new term for you and you're here to learn what that's about. Early decision is a binding process that many colleges offer that allow you to apply to a university with the commitment that if you are admitted, you will enroll in their first year class. Um, Northwestern welcomes about half of our first year class of 2000 students through the early decision process every year. 
So early decision students are doing the research now in the fall of their senior year, both to be sure that Northwestern is a fit for them academically and socially, and also to be sure that Northwestern is an affordable option for them. We want you to, to know going into the early decision process what that cost of attendance will be so that you and your family can confidently commit to Northwestern if this is the place that you'd like to be. The early decision application process is identical in most ways to our regular decision round of admission. That's the second and final round of admission for incoming first year students that we offer each year. There is no binding commitment associated with the regular decision option. Early decision candidates apply to Northwestern by November 1 of their senior year. They hear back from us with a decision in mid-December. And if they are admitted, their search is done. They are enrolling at Northwestern and starting that journey, celebrating all their many accomplishments and, and foregoing any other applications. You commit in an early decision process to withdrawing applications that you may have submitted at any other school and submitting that enrollment deposit at Northwestern. The regular decision round happens in the winter. That's an early January deadline, January 3 this year. Regular decision students hear back from us in mid-March. And there's, again, no such commitment associated with that round of admission. Our focus today is on early decision applicants. And so we're going to get into um, how students come to that decision. How do they conduct a college search? And especially at this point in the year, do the final research that they need to do to feel confident in their early decision movement and that choice. Um, what do, did our panelists know or not know about Northwestern in the admission process and, and what insight do they have to share with you? And then as we go through our time together this afternoon, we'll certainly address the general questions that you have about academics, student life, Evanston and Chicago, any insight that you need as you're finalizing those plans. The last piece that I want to share about early decision admission is that you can be assured that your financial aid award from Northwestern will be identical in both the early and the regular decision rounds. Northwestern offers a need-based financial aid program. All of our aid dollars are directed towards students on the basis of family need. The only exception to that is a small number of music performance scholarships that are offered to students who are coming into the Bean and School of Music. For everyone else, a need-based financial aid program means two big things. We commit to meeting 100% of your family's demonstrated financial need. So in the financial aid application process, your family's contribution to college is determined. Northwestern covers everything in excess of that up to the full cost of tuition. So if there is a gap between what your family can contribute and what it costs to be a Northwestern student, we cover that in full. And we have a loan-free financial aid policy. That's the second big commitment. When we fill that gap, we do not rely on student loans to do so. That aid package, again, is the same regardless of whether you are coming in as an early decision or a regular decision candidate. Um, the only other piece to know about financial aid is, of course, if you're thinking about early decision, you want to have that information on hand right away. Uh, our website offers a number of helpful tools that will give you a very accurate estimate of what a financial aid package will entail, and we certainly encourage you to take advantage of those. We can get into all of the detail as we go along, but I'd like to kick it back to our panelists and start with, um, let's go back to the college search. So before you even get to submitting that early decision application, um, panelists, can you share what stood out to you about Northwestern during your college search? Um, what was the thing that really sparked your interest and compelled you to learn more and eventually to apply? Taylor, can you kick us off? Yeah, of course. So I was fortunate enough to grow up in New York City and I had everything within a few blocks radius for me. Um, and going to Northwestern and touring the campus, I knew that I was looking for a college that was close to a city and Chicago is so accessible, so easy to get to. I love food. I love museums and arts. So being so close and having that at my fingertips, just the train or bus stop away or a car ride um, is one of the benefits to being at Northwestern. And that was something that I was looking for in my college search. Additionally, with specific interests in mind, such as my communication studies major, and then also the entrepreneurship minor, um, Northwestern's outstanding curriculum spoke to me and the charged environment and dynamic culture and um, various interests that every student does have here. Uh, lastly, I would talk about the garage in my, my Why Northwestern supplement. I wrote about how um, the garage is this startup hub. And I knew that coming into college, I was looking to uh, build my own company and have my own startup. So 
having this resource and being able to tour the garage and reach out to professors before coming here was one thing that um, most in or interested me most about Northwestern's campus. And I'm gonna pass it off to Jasmine. Yeah, so um, when I was looking at colleges, I knew that I wanted to go into engineering specifically. Um, and so that already kind of limited my options because chemical engineering is surprisingly difficult to find. And uh, Northwestern has an incredible engineering program, like the Engineering First curriculum, um, which gives you foundations in uh, linear algebra, physics, MATLAB coding, um, as well, and our chemical engineering department is fantastic. They had everything in terms of research interests that I was really interested in. I love biotechnology and synthetic biology, and like a third of my entire department does research in those fields, which is incredible. And I also, similarly to Taylor, wanted access to a big city. I'm from a rural area from South Dakota, and so I did not have access to all of the things that Chicago has. And so I knew that, um, Northwestern um, was near a big city. I could access it. I could go to all the museums. I could uh, visit all of the places that I never could visit when I was at home. And so um, that was a really cool thing that really interested me about Northwestern. And I will pass it off to Raghav. Uh, so for me, it really centered around uh, the journalism. I want to pursue sports journalism. I've known I wanted to do that for a long time. And so many of my favorite writers, journalists um, on TV, if you guys watch Sports Center or Get Up, you know, Mike Greenberg, Michael Wilbon, these are all people that went to Northwestern, are Medill alum. And I, it was pretty simple for me. I just wanted to follow in their footsteps and get that high level of uh, journalism education. And I also wanted to be close to home. I live 40 minutes away and having such a world-class institution so close to my home was really important to me. Um, yeah, so for me, it was the journalism and the connection to home. Uh, I'll pass it to Chloe. All right. I think for me, there are three different things. First of all, similar to Taylor, I am from LA and I respect the middle of nowhere community. I did not want to go to a school that I couldn't, you know, get any food that I wanted, try any kind of cuisine, any kind of museum, things like that. And so I did want to stay kind of not necessarily in the middle of, but definitely near, a, you know, a big world class city. Secondly, I think a big thing for me was the people. And this is something that, you know, you're in the college search, looking at comparable schools, looking at, I won't name them. Yes, I will. You Chicago, other schools in the area, other schools on the East Coast. And I think that for me, there was a different, I think vibe is too simple of a word, but just a different attitude that Northwest students carried where, we're obviously we're attending this great institution. We're attending this big research school, but we're also normal, and we're very just we're very chill about it. I think that other schools didn't really have the same energy for me. I think the third thing was, I went to a very small high school. No sports, no choir, no cheer team, no homecoming, nothing. Like tiny little high school in the middle of downtown LA. And so looking at colleges, I really wanted a school that you know had that big. We're gonna have a big marching band. We're gonna have all these sports games. Whether or not we win the sports game, just have a conversation, but we have them and I'm able to go to them and just have a really good time that I didn't get in high school. Those are the big things for me. And I'll pass to Alyssa. Hello again, everyone. So just quick context. In high school, I was the poster child of an undecided student. I had no idea at all what I wanted to do going into college. And what I really love about Northwestern is that you're not expected to. If you've done any research about Northwestern beforehand, I'm sure you've seen and is in our DNA, which is maybe a little cheesy, but it's really true because I love the quarter system and it really gives you such a great opportunity to take a million classes. So I know for me, I waited until the end of sophomore year, which is the latest you can um, to declare a major. I took all different kinds of classes. I thought I was going to do a million majors until I found something that I really loved and was really passionate about. And even with all of that, so I declared late as you possibly can, I studied abroad in a uh, past fall semester, fall quarter. Um, and I also took fun classes like introduction to painting and I am graduating early. So really, and is really in our DNA. There's a lot of things you can do in a short amount of time. So really, really amazing. So I'm going to pass that to Matt. Hi, everyone. I actually didn't get a chance to introduce myself. I'm one of the assistant directors in the Office of Undergraduate Admission. So I didn't actually go to Northwestern for my undergrad, but I am a Bean and alum for my grad degree. I'll pass it back to Val. 
Welcome, Matt. So glad you could join us. Um, before we get to the next question, I just want to say I am loving the hellos happening in the chat. Please keep those coming. Please also direct your questions to us via the Q&A function. Um, we won't be able to address the virtual hand raises today or questions that come in via chat. It's just moving a little bit too quickly. Um, so hands will go down, but you are very welcome to submit questions to us via the Q&A, and we will get to as many of them as possible. So we've got a great introduction to the things that stand out or that stood out to our panelists during the college search. Now I want to bring that to the application process. So how did you go through a college search and, and gain the confidence to apply ED? Can you describe that moment or that process by which you knew, I can make this commitment to Northwestern as a senior in high school? Taylor, can you start us off by talking a little bit about that commitment? Yeah, so when I was touring campus, just to reconfirm that this is definitely where I wanted to go, um, my senior year in high school in the fall before applications were due, I actually reached out to comms professor here um, because knowing that I wanted to apply to the School of Communications and they were willing to meet with me when I was on campus and that confirmed my um, interest and decision that ED was right for me and this is the path that I wanted to take. Not only did I love the campus and being here, but um, knowing that there are professors here that were willing to meet with students and so eager uh, to sit down one-on-one -on -one outside of class time was something that I knew that that was why Northwestern was right for me. Um, additionally, for why I was applying ED, I had already known that this was definitely the school. Um, it was my top school, and I knew that I believed that I could fit in perfectly here. Um, additionally, because I was applying to the school of comm, it is a smaller school, and I had already decided that that was where I was going to apply, so it, I figured my chances to maybe hire applying early decision. Um, and then lastly, of course, the benefits of knowing exactly where you're going earlier on than some other people in your high school does relieve some stress. Um, and you are one step closer having that application in and for ED. And I understand that ED is not for everyone, but for me, that was one thing that I was definitely um, persistent on applying early decision. I'm gonna pass it off to Jasmine. So um, also coming into Northwestern and just college in general, I knew that I wanted to do chemical engineering. Um, and so again, that limited my choices. Northwestern has a really top ranked engineering program. And I decided that I wanted to go to school uh, in an area that had a close city. So I knew that Northwestern had like the perfect combination of the things that I really wanted. I also am from a low income family. And so I knew that financially, this would actually be the most feasible option for me. Like Val mentioned, we have an incredible financial aid office um, that really does a lot. And um, so I knew that uh, the best part of early decision was that I got my financial aid letter like two or so weeks after I got my admissions decision, which really helped uh, make me feel so much better about going to college and affording college because I already knew, okay, um, early decision at Northwestern. I already know that I'm going to, I can go there and I can afford to go there, which was incredible. And other schools um, weren't going to give me anything until March. And so for me, knowing my financial aid package was the biggest benefit of applying early decision. And it really made me confident that Northwestern really was the choice for me in addition to having my major and everything else that I wanted. Um, and I will kick it off to Alyssa. Okay, just like I mentioned earlier with being undecided in my major, I am undecided in about everything in my life. Hard putting on clothes in the morning. It's hard for me to make any sort of decision. So deciding to commit fully to Northwestern was a super scary one. Just the concept of early decision in general was really scary. But since I'm from Chicago, Northwestern was the first place that I toured and I immediately fell in love. I really could see myself there. And for lack of a better word, like Chloe was saying, just the vibe in general was a place where people were working hard, but also having a lot of fun. Students were outside and it was just a general feeling that I had on campus that really made me fall in love. But I don't know if that was necessarily enough for me right away to say, okay, I'm going full in. It's the first school I saw. So I continued touring, I continued researching all throughout um, my junior, my senior year. And once I got to application season, I was realizing that every school that I went to, I was just comparing back to Northwestern. So I had that mindset of, okay, this school's nice, but is it better than Northwestern? And for me, that answer was always no. Northwestern was still my number one. It was the place where I really saw myself. And even if there were other great, great options, um, Northwestern was just the place that 
again, I saw myself and really saw myself spending the next four years. So then wrapping it all up, I decided to apply early decision. And of course, it was amazing to be done for the holiday season and know exactly where I'm going. So the obvious benefit of early decision. Uh, but I'll pass that off to Chloe. The biggest benefit of ED just in general, as others have said, getting that letter in December, being able to go to your Christmas dinner and tell your grandma, guess what? I know where I'm going. And being able to go back to school in January, even though I'm a senior, I did graduate high school in 2020, didn't really have a spring semester to, to gloat about it. But being able to just go back to school in the new year and while everyone else is still thinking about it, you already know where you're going. That is just, that peace of mind is just unmatched. But for me specifically, what stood out to me with my person applying ED was the quarter system. I think others have said this earlier, how, you know, kind of indecisive. For me, the quarter system wasn't about being indecisive, but about getting bored. And I remember in high school, semesters were 17 weeks long or so. And around week eight, week nine of every semester, I said, well, what's next? We, we can't possibly be doing this for another nine weeks. We were going to be doing that for another nine weeks, but I was just, I was tired of it. And so I knew looking just immediately as I started looking for colleges, I love the way Northwestern approaches the quarter system. The dates, I'm from L, I'm from LA, as I, said, as, I said, ooh, as I said before, and the UC system is on the quarter system, but those dates are so, they're weird to me. I don't know. Northwestern is just, the quarter system makes sense here compared to other schools. And so that just immediately set it apart from other schools for me. I think another thing for me, I'm a posse scholar. And so financially, I had what nine or 10 schools that I could choose from that I knew were all going to offer me the same aid. So what separated Northwestern from other schools was just the way that I think the admissions office and that former students reached out to kind of talk to me about the university. And I never felt like I was on my own doing the research. There are other students there for me kind of offering me their honest opinions about the university. And that really helped me make my decision in the end. And I pass it off to Raghav. So for me, uh, I'm going to reiterate what a lot of people said, but I think the peace of mind was the biggest aspect of it. Um, knowing that I have one place in my mind that I want to go to, it just makes the whole process easier. You can really like pour your heart and soul into like applying to the school, doing your best for the essays and making sure that, you know, like you're committing yourself to the school. And it also shows Northwestern that you are really just like committed to going to the school and you appreciate the resources and just everything about Northwestern that makes it so great. And then again, just on December 17th, knowing, or I don't know what the date's going to be this year, but for our year, it was December 17th, knowing that I'm done with the the college process and having a really nice winter break that year was um, super fun. Thanks everyone for sharing. Um, I, I love all of this insight for so many reasons. And one thing I hope you all take away is just the reality that there's so much pressure on you as a high school senior to find the one dream school, the one single place where you will be, you know, sort of above all happiest, right? And, and, the, and the best match school. And I think that's a lot of pressure as you're going into this decision process, because the reality is so many of our panelists have noted is there are probably several schools that are exciting to you or that offer things that you might be interested in or that might seem like a good match for you. But when you continually come back to one as a reference point and you're comparing other options to Northwestern and you're realizing that the combination of things that you want in a college experience is all coming together at one place, that's something that you can be confident in. And I think that that's where a lot of our early decision applicants draw that confidence from to move into the early decision process. I'd like to address a couple of logistical questions that have come in in the Q&A about early decision applications. And then we'll come back to our panelists for a little bit more insight on their transition to Northwestern. Um, one question that has come up uh, is about whether an early decision agreement requires you or limits you from applying to other schools. You are welcome to submit applications to other universities when you apply as an early decision candidate to Northwestern, but they must be non-binding applications. So you cannot apply as an early decision candidate to multiple schools, and you will commit to withdrawing those applications if you are admitted to Northwestern. So you, your parents or guardians, and your high school counselor will all sign an agreement to that effect that you understand that commitment. Um, that is true whether you are an international school and looking at other international universities, an international international student, excuse me, looking at other international schools or whether you are a, a U.S. student. True for everyone, you can apply elsewhere, but you must withdraw those applications if you are admitted to Northwestern. 
The second question that's come in several times is about QuestBridge applicants. So if you're not familiar with QuestBridge, it's an incredible program. Um, what Northwestern welcomes a number of QuestBridge scholars, it's an academic scholarship program. Northwestern welcomes a number of QuestBridge scholars to campus each year. And we have an incredibly vibrant and tightly knit Quest scholars community on our campus. That's the third application that Northwestern accepts for admission. So the common application, the coalition application, and the QuestBridge application are the three paths to apply to Northwestern. QuestBridge students experience a match process. So their admission process um, has a few additional layers than an applicant who's coming in via the Common App or the Coalition App. QuestBridge students, if you are not matched with Northwestern um, in the match process via the QuestBridge application, you will have the opportunity to become an early decision candidate at Northwestern. We will send you more information directly about that process, but since it's been asked a few times in the chat, I wanted to be sure to address that. We will continue to get through as many of your questions as we can, but now I want to go back to our panelists and talk a little bit about, you've, you've built the confidence, Northwestern stood out to you in your college search, you built the confidence, you came in as an early decision student. Will you talk about your transition to Northwestern? What surprised you? What did you not realize in the admission process that you learned as a new student and you feel like all of our attendees today should know? Taylor, can you kick us off again? Yeah, of course. Um, I have three things that stand out to me when you ask this question. The first one is I did not realize the extreme vast range of Northwestern's clubs and that are showcased here at Northwestern um, and the different interests of the student body and their eagerness to immerse themselves within the community. I guess this goes to show about the people that we do have here at Northwestern, but also just the power and pres presence of student-run organizations on campus in that they are really student-run and um, they can go so far in terms of philanthropic work or uh, planning a trip for an organization. Um, and then the second thing I would want to emphasize, as Chloe mentioned about the quarter system, uh, one thing that I realized coming here, I think applying, I was a little uh, skeptical of the quarter system just because of how fast it did move. But since being here, I think that is one of the pros for my own learning experience, just because the quarter system does move really fast and I am um, someone who wants to work at a quick pace always. So this has been something for me that's been very helpful in my own learning experience that I don't think my friends are getting at a semester school because I get to take so many more classes than they do. And if I don't like a class, it's over nine weeks. Um, and then lastly, I think that I did not realize how the commitment of professors towards students to succeed. As I mentioned before, when I reached out to the comms professor, uh, whenever there's a class that I want to take, I email the teacher and most likely than not, I they do push for me to get into that class. And as well, they're always willing to meet you outside of class on their own hours and work one-on-one -on -one with you and establish your own learning needs and help you succeed, which I did have in high school, but here it's even more um, prominent in my life. And I'm gonna pass it on to Jasmine again. Thanks, Taylor. Um, the thing that I realized after I got to Northwestern was that even as an engineering major, I could really explore everything that I wanted to explore. Engineering is a little bit more strict in its requirements, um, especially my department, chemical engineering is very specific about what they require. But uh, the McCormick School does build in like seven classes called your theme, where you can really explore whatever you want to explore. You can do a language minor, you can add in through your dual degree with Beanin, with School of Music, if you have that. Um, for me, I chose to explore disability justice. And so I took a bunch of classes on that and gender studies. And so I really got to just do whatever I wanted to in addition to engineering and still get like course credit for it rather than just trying to tack on classes and shove everything into a really limited time space. Um, but Northwestern and all of the undergraduate schools really want you to be able to have that freedom and that choice to really just explore extra things. And McCormick, probably better than anyone knows that you can't just do all STEM classes all the time. You need a little bit of a break. Um, so that's something that I didn't know really before coming into Northwestern, but it's been my favorite thing about Northwestern so far. Um, and I will kick it over to Raga. Uh, I have two main things. Uh, firstly, I really didn't um, realize, especially in the journalism field, how many opportunities I would get to practice in the field. 
um, so early on. Like as a freshman, I was able to um, cover four different sports. I was able to sit on the basketball court, um, filming games, just doing stuff I've like dreamt about doing my whole life. And I've been able to do it. I was able to do it in my first year. I'm going to get to do it in a further capacity as a sophomore. And in that same vein, I'm a sports guy, so I got to talk about the sports. Um, People always focus on the mainstream sports, whether that's football or basketball, but Northwestern has so many fantastic sports teams and going to all those games have been some of the best memories I've had at Northwestern, whether that was volleyball games, softball games, uh, lacrosse. We're really a, a women's sports school, and I think we take a lot of pride in that here at Northwestern. Um, so going to all those games has been super fun, and there's a real sense of community amongst the students that really comes out at those sports games, so I really enjoy that. Uh, I'll kick it to Alyssa. So I also have a couple things, but to start, I am really impressed with the level of um, intelligence of all of our professors here. Obviously, it's something that Northwestern talks about, but don't know if necessarily you'll believe it until you're taking these classes. For example, a lot of classes I've taken, the professors are the one who wrote their textbooks and are really the expo experts in their field. So I feel like I'm getting a lot of real knowledge that I can take to all my other classes or, um, or for example, in my integrated marketing communication certificate, a lot of the professors actually worked in the field for 20 years or more and are now coming back to teach um, really practical knowledge, which has been amazing with the IMC specifically. And then also alumni are super involved, which is really cool. Um, and again, this class that I'm talking about right now for my IMC, we have next week, we have a guest speaker where the old CMO of McDonald's is coming to talk to us, who was in a North Northwestern teacher now, and then our women in business club, our next meeting, we're having the current CMO of MB NBC coming to talk to us, which is amazing. And just kind of one last thing, um, switching majors and um, switching schools is really as easy as Northwestern makes it sound. When I was undecided, you're undecided in the Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences. And to switch into the School of Communication, it really was one piece of paper. It took one day. I signed it. And then all of a sudden, I was in a completely different school doing something completely different. And same with, you know, IMC. So I'm in three of the six schools at Northwestern. And it sounds like a lot, but it really is um, a great opportunity. So then I'll pass it to Chloe. So before I say anything, I see the chat. They said there were two boba shops in Evanston. It's closer to six. If your decision to go to school based on how many boba shops there are, Northwestern's unmatched. You can't go to any other school if you love boba. It's, you have to come here. I'll say three things I did not know, one of which is more Evanston related. The other two are Northwestern. The weather here is humid. And everyone told me Chicago was going to be cold. They said, Chloe, you got to buy a coat. Chloe, you got to buy some boots. No one told me I was going to be sweaty. So be warned. It is very humid here. Number two is that you can do basically everything. And I don't mean that in a, you know, just wait, stay, stay awake all day, stay awake all night, don't go to sleep way. I mean, when I was in high school, I was telling my parents, I want to, you know, have three majors, you know, two majors and two minors. I want, you know, five certificates. My parents are like, that's crazy. Just choose one. You can only choose one. You can do three majors. You can do two minors and two certificates. You can... If you have, you know, you want your primary major and you want to you want to studies on the side, you love a language, you love music, you want to add things to that, you can do it. You work with your advisors. There is a way for you to add in all everything that you want to study. You can add it in all together. I think the third thing is that with whatever you choose to major in, if you decide, you know, beginning of senior year, you want a completely different job, NCA and the question, they will help you make that happen. I think you don't, even with, you know, you're majoring in, I mean, there are limits. I'm a political science major. I'm not taking the MCAT. I'm not going to med school next year. There are limits, you know, let's be reasonable. But you can really just make your degree what you want it to be for you. As you're progressing to Northwestern, professors are there to support you. Your advisors are there to support you. And they will help you get to where you want to go. Thanks, everyone. I, I want to turn next to, we're getting great questions in the chat about experiential learning. So I, I want to invite our panelists to talk a little bit about meaningful experiences they've had outside of class, research, abroad experiences, internships, and the like. But first, I want to speak uh, to the undergraduate school model that Northwestern has and how that impacts the admission process. So Northwestern is home to six undergraduate schools, as you may know. The Weinberg College of Arts and Sciences is the largest school on campus. Every student, as you've heard, takes classes in Weinberg at some point during their journey here. And then there are five other schools um, where students uh, call home. They have an academic home, and one of our 
our six schools. And the other five, uh, the Medill School of Journalism, Media, Integrated Marketing, Communications, the McCormick School of Engineering and Applied Science, the School of Communication, which houses our communication programs, but also some fine arts like theater, dance, radio, television, and film, the School of Education and Social Policy, and the Beenan School of Music. In the admission process, you will, in most cases, select one of these six schools to apply to. And uh, in three of the six schools, you will indicate a major that you're interested in pursuing. So students will select a major if they're coming into the School of Journalism because they only offer one, journalism, so default major there. They'll indicate a major if they're coming into the School of Music and the School of Communication. In the other three schools, you are welcome to apply as an undecided candidate. So that's College of Arts and Sciences, the School of Engineering, and the School of Education. Across those six schools, there is no significant difference in the admission rates between one or the other. So from an admission standpoint, we're really looking to get a sense of where your interests lie at this point in time, knowing that many students, as you've heard, come into Northwestern and change their mind and explore opportunities in addition to that primary area of interest. Some students are applying to Northwestern as dual degree candidates. So this is most common for students who are interested in the Bean and School of Music, and they also have an interest in pursuing a separate distinct bachelor's degree in another area of study. So let's say the School of Music and the School of Engineering. I'm getting a little bit into the weeds here, but this question has come up a few times in the Q&A, and I want to make sure for our early decision candidates that it's addressed. In almost every case, Northwestern will review dual degree candidates and make one decision that is the same for both schools. There are rare instances where you might apply as a Bean and School of Music candidate and a candidate to another one of our undergraduate schools and not be offered a music audition to move forward in the admission process. In that case, we'll be in touch with you directly and you'll have the option to indicate whether you'd still like to be considered as an early decision candidate in the second school. I love that you all have already done so much research to be asking a question like that. Hopefully that helps to clarify it a little bit. Um, there Again, there's no admission advantage or disadvantage to indicating other majors or interests. There's no difference in financial aid awards based on majors or programs that has come up a few times in the chat as well. So with that foundation in mind, six distinct schools, all collaborative partners where students can take advantage of the opportunities in all six. Um, the other big hallmark of the experience at Northwestern that we're gonna get into now is experiential learning. So you've got this great academic foundation now I want our panelists to talk a little bit about bringing that to life. And many of you have already shared examples, but can you call out some really meaningful experiences that you've had outside of class and maybe how you found those? Um, Taylor, would you like to kick us off again? Yeah, of course. So as I mentioned, I am a big foodie and that is one draw for me to be in a city near, uh, near Chicago and out Northwestern. So one of the clubs, campus clubs that I'm part of and I'm also vice president of currently is called Spoon NU and it's our own food publication platform. There's Instagram, TikTok that we run and then also um, editorial site. And through that, there was an offer when I was a freshman to be an intern for a food influencer in Chicago. Her Instagram was at Fab Food Chicago, and I had the opportunity to, I worked for free, but it was just the experience for myself that I was able to go to Chicago and try some foods. I was testing some foods, and then also I ran her social media and also scheduled a lot of her posts that were coming up in the next few weeks. Um, additionally, I did get to study abroad. I went to Australia, and Northwestern does a great way of does a great job of helping you find the school abroad if that's what, what you're interested in um, that suits you and for me I got to study entrepreneurship while I was in Australia and I was there for four months and then came back all my, I went from for the fall fall quarter so I was there from August until December and all my course credits were transferred transferred to quarter credits and it actually left me with some extra credits and I'm able to graduate early because of that but um, I had a great experience traveling abroad and Northwestern does a lot of experiential learning and has a lot of opportunities for you so I'll pass it on to Jasmine. Taylor. Um, so I, as a second year, decided that I wanted to do research on biomaterials. And so 
I um, looked at my department and I went to the research tab and I saw the research areas and didn't really see that anyone was doing like, specific biomaterials type research. Um, they do synthetic biology stuff, but a lot with like circuits, not entirely what I was interested in, but along the same lines. Um, so I decided to check out the other engineering department's websites and I went to their research tabs and I went to the material science department uh, research tab, saw that someone was doing stuff with like biomaterials and nanotechnology. And I was like, this sounds cool. I'm going to go see what professors do research in this. I went to their faculty tab and I looked up all their faculty members um, that the research tab said did research in um, uh, biomaterials. And I found one professor and I emailed him and I was like, hey, I'm so-and-so. I'm a second year. I'm really interested in doing research in your lab because like biomaterials are super cool and like you do stuff with trying to regenerate bones which is fascinating and at the time I wanted to go to medical school and I was like this is perfectly applicable to what I want to do and um so he was like sure my lab is really big and I have someone else handle all of the undergraduate requests here's his email he will connect with you and schedule a meeting and so I had a meeting with this person and um he went through all of the research that his lab does and I was like fantastic. I want to get involved in these projects. And so we reached out to the grad students doing projects with that um, specific area that I wanted to be involved in, which uh, was peptide amplifiles for bone regeneration. Um, and so then when a graduate student got back to him, I was like, I'm interested in having an undergrad to mentor. And uh, that was that. And I was in the lab. And um, it was super cool and a lot of fun. And uh, through that experience, I learned that I hate planning experiments. So um, I applied for the summer undergraduate research grant. I was awarded the research grant. And two days later, I decided I was quitting research. Um, so I learned a lot. I learned a lot about like the specific lab research, but I also learned that I don't like planning experiments. I love pipetting. I love reading all of the research papers. It's fascinating, fantastic. But I also learned that I don't really like a lot of the practical things about research. Uh, but that's a great thing about Northwestern. You can try something, hate it, quit it, and no one's going to judge you, um, which was a lot of fun. And um, yeah, it was, a, it was a really cool experience. So I will pass it off to Raghav. Uh, I kind of already talked about some of it, but um, again, the sport journalism opportunities that I've gotten here outside of my, I haven't taken, you can, there are sports writing classes, but the main experience I've gotten in the field I want to pursue in as a professional or the field I want to be in as a professional has been through student organizations, whether that's our radio station or our TV show that we have, the Northwestern News Network. I've gotten so many cool opportunities to be on camera. Um, not to plug a show, but I host a, a sports talk show every Sunday night um, that goes out in the Evanston, Chicagoland area, which is always really weird to me that someone driving could just tune in to me talking about Northwestern sports. Um, but I think as a Medill student, the experience I'm most excited for and have been looking forward to the minute since the minute I got here is the journalism residency program. Um, it's a it's a required internship in the Medill curriculum where you go out for a quarter um, either in your junior or senior year, and you complete an internship that goes towards your graduation. And some of the experiences that people get are so cool through journalism residency, especially in sports. I know someone right now who's doing their journalism residency with the Marquee Sports Network, which is the TV station that broadcasts Chicago Cubs games. He just goes to Wrigley Field every day and he's producing Cubs games. And I was like, I want to do that. So really, really cool experiences that you get through the journalism residency program. And it just gives you a lot of clarity if it's the right field for you. But the student organizations here are incredible. And that's where a lot of my out-of-classroom learning has been. Um, I'll pass it off to Alyssa. So the main thing that I want to talk about is study abroad. It was something I knew I wanted to do going into college. I was really, really excited about the idea of going out of the country. I took French in high school. I took a few quarters at Northwestern as well. You just don't really have the chance to use French that much um, in Chicago, in America in general. So I really wanted to go to France. Northwestern has some really cool programs. I was in the South of France last fall quarter, and it was honestly the best thing I have ever done. It was my first time out of the country. Um, which was a really big change, but really cool. I learned a lot of amazing things. I made some best friends. Actually, they just visited me this past weekend, which was really cool. They came to the Northwestern football game. So, so much fun and just all around, just really, really amazing experience. And I am pretty sure one third, about one third of students study abroad. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I know it's a very high stat. 
Um, so in general, like it's really easy to do so, or even I have friends who are graduating extremely early, have a ton of majors, um, and just things to do. And there's, they still have the ability to study abroad. So it's really easy to do it and an amazing opportunity. And then also just some really cool Northwestern clubs. Like I'm on the synchronized skating team, which is so cool. I had skated my whole life, had no idea we had that got here. And now I've done it all four years, which is cool. And then women in business, obviously a really cool, very practical club um, for obviously women seeking to be in the business world. We have amazing guest speakers. You learn a lot and just all around Northwestern has a lot of fun things to do and a lot of ways to get to do them. So then I'll pass it off to Chloe. For sure. I think for me, my freshman year, I remember I had a professor in an entry level poli sci class and I spent a lot of time talking with them about what I wanted to do. And it was my freshman year. I wasn't too pressed about internship or anything. I was just kind of, you know, want to explore different roles. And about two or three weeks later, a professional alum reached out to her with an internship opportunity, which she then sent to me. And this was an opportunity to do communications, crisis communications for the Michigan State Senate. Mind you, born and raised in LA, going to school in Evanston. I never been to Michigan before in my life. But I decided I'll go for it. I'll take the internship. And this was an unpaid internship, which no one's ever happy about. But I applied for the summer internship grant program, and then I did get funded from Northwestern to do that internship. And so I'm half remote, half in Michigan, and I'm working on this internship, and I'm learning so much about, you know, what it means to work in the state senate. I'm in these state senate hearings. I'm, you know, working with individual senators and the senate as a whole, and it really taught me a lot about, you know, the classes that I'm taking are nice. You read about it, but now I'm actually, you know, sitting there in real life watching senate hearings happen. And it was a really great experience. I think similar to Jasmine, I realized I do not want to do crisis communications. We did have some bad flooding in Michigan, and I had to be up on a Saturday night writing PR for that. Not a fan. No, thank you. I learned that very quickly. But I just, being able to bring my class work into life was just such a great, a great experience for me. Thanks all for sharing. Uh, the things you learn in an internship um, about what you don't want to do are, are just as important as things you learn that you do might you do want to do in life. So I, I love that insight, Chloe. Thank you. Um, we are when I tell you, you all have asked hundreds of questions in this Q and A. Um, they are so good. We will not get through all of them today, or even a handful, just because of the volume. But one big theme that's still coming up is about application essays. So in a minute, I'll invite our panelists to share what they remember about their Why Northwestern supplemental essay. But first, let me speak to some changes that we've made in the admission process uh, just this year. So for years, Northwestern asked one supplemental question um, that invited students to share more about their interest in Northwestern, their college search so far, and what they hoped to gain from being a member of our community. And we've built on that this year. So um, instead of asking just one question, students are going to be invited to answer a series of questions that get at a little bit more detail about their interest in Northwestern. So our supplemental questions now require you to answer one question that is more you focused, um, and you'll be allowed to share a little bit of in insight about how your identity, your background, your experiences have prepared you well to be a great fit for the Northwestern community. So explaining to us what you already know, which is there's a match here, we want to know why. The other questions will invite you to choose from a series of prompts that are more Northwestern specific. So they speak very directly to our values and our priorities as a community, and they'll allow you to share more about why our location, why our traditions, why our interdisciplinary culture, any of those things matter to you as a student, how you hope to take advantage of them. And our goal across all of those questions is to get a sense of who you hope to be in college. You do not need to have it all figured out. I think we've done a great job today of explaining that this is a place of discovery. Um, you'll not, you'll, you're not going to come to Northwestern with a firm four-year plan in place that you never deviate from. You're going to discover things you never had been exposed to before here. But these questions will give us a sense of where you stand now. Um, with all the great research that you've done, all the work that you've put into your high school experience, how has that led you to Northwestern as a place where you really feel like you could thrive as a college student? So that's our supplemental essay model this year. We are very excited to dive into these questions. I think they are true to the priorities that we hold as a community and as an admission committee. But I still think it's relevant for you to hear from our panelists about what they shared in a simpler version of that question or a broader version of that question several years ago. Um, so panelists, can you tell us if you remember what you wrote about in your Why Northwestern and why that was a priority for you to share with the admission committee? Taylor, I'll let you kick it off. Yeah, so again, going back to 
the breadth of the student clubs here that we have at Northwestern. I wrote about the ones that I was definitely interested in that I had done research on and that involved uh, NUDM, Northwest, or the largest student run dance marathon that we host right outside Norris, our student hub um, on campus. And then I also talked about Spoon NU making because I had always known that I really wanted to be a part of Spoon University, which is the food publication. So those were two um, clubs that I had mentioned in my Why Northwestern. Additionally, I remember starting off my essay talking, saying, setting the um, picture that I could picture myself on campus and on the lake fill. I remember talking about how I had envisioned having a hammock up on the lake fill um, and between the trees uh, just reading a book and that was going to be my happy place and I have lived that every spring I look forward to taking my campus taking my uh, hammock out putting it on a tree and reading and just having some peaceful time with the beautiful Chicago skyline in the background uh, Jasmine I'm passing it on to you now Awesome. Thanks, Taylor. Um, yeah, so in my way, Northwestern, I was fascinated with the engineering program. I really wanted to take this two core sequence called design thinking and communication, um, which for those of you who don't know, you're put in the classes of 16, four teams of four, you have a real world client who has a problem and your job over the course of the quarter is to come up with a solution to that problem. Um, and so I did the virtual tour as well as an in-person tour. And on the virtual tour, they talk about this DTC story um, where students were assigned to come up with a solution for the Shedd Aquarium. And so the Shedd Aquarium lets out their penguins at night. But they had a problem where they switched the flooring. It ended up on linoleum and the penguins were slipping and sliding and they were falling and they were getting hurt. And so this DTC team was tasked to come up with some sort of like shoe or booty to put on the... Uh, feed of the penguins to try and like help keep them from slipping and they called they um the students ended up coming up in a patent there they got a patent the booties were purple and i distinctly remember using the phrase maybe i'll find some booties of my own and talking about dancing or something it was the whole thing it was like four years ago y'all so i apologize for not remembering a huge amount from it um but i remember talking a lot about ttc um, and I thought it was the coolest thing. And it actually was one of my favorite classes. Um, I really enjoyed all of like the technical writing. I really loved coming up with the solution and learning how to work with people, um, learn how to technical do technical writing, which I had never been exposed to uh, before Northwestern um, because I'm from a rural uh, town. I did not have any connections to that. And so it was really cool to be able to do that. Um, and also actually design something, produce something. I was a first year engineering student and we came up with something like physical, real. One of my projects was to 3D print an attachment for a router. So like we physically had a prototype that we could give to our client, which was really cool. Um, and um, I thoroughly enjoyed that class and it was a awesome connection to my actual Why Northwestern essay. And I will kick off to Raga. Uh, for me, I there may be some cherubs uh, in this uh, webinar right now, but I was a cherub and I learned a lot about Northwestern through that program. And I really reflected that in my essay. I got to interact with Northwestern professors, uh, meet Northwestern alumni. And that's what I centered my um, Why Northwestern around because it truly was my Why Northwestern. That was the summer before my senior year. And it sold Northwestern to me. I knew that this was the place I wanted to be. It was the uh, professors I wanted to work with. And that's what I highlighted in my essay. There wasn't, uh, I didn't have a great story like Jasmine's. I wish I did. That sounds so cool. But um, I, yeah, I censored mine around the chairs program. Um, Alyssa, I'll kick to you. Um, obviously, this was four years ago, so I'm pushing the limits of my memory a little bit. But the first thing that I remember I talked about was some classic Northwestern traditions that were just so unique and seemed so much fun. And then seeing them come to life on my tour was like so cool, which actually I've seen you guys talk about so much in the chat, which is the rock. Um, so there is a rock on campus. It's huge. Um, anyone can paint it. You just have to guard it for 24 hours. We do have a rock cam. You can watch anywhere, um, which is really fun and unique. Clubs actually do paint this 
all of the time, there is a new rock very, very often. So it's not really, you know, a Northwestern marketing thing. People who really do this and a lot of times advertise for their clubs um, are sitting out there. You see tents, camping chairs a lot. Um, so just random fun traditions that are very Northwestern specific was something I focused on. And then also I pulled out some really unique like Northwestern classes. Um, I was doing research about Northwestern and just got in awe with some of the professors. And I was really stunned by the work they had done and the fact that they had these really cool classes. Um, I know I also saw Marriage 101 being brought up in there. I did bring that up. It's a really cool course that a lot of people want to take. Um, so just generally things that were like Northwestern specific that just seemed like so much fun that I was really excited to get the opportunity to, you know, see in real life. And then I will pass it off to Chloe. The benefit is going last is that I did just go to my old Google Drive and pull up my wine question statement. So I'm reading it right now. It is terrible. I don't know. I'm shocked to read this. I can't believe I used to write like this. I'm appalled, actually. One sentence. Mine was an extended metaphor for the color purple. Purple as a color. Comparing it to some of Trace McQuestion has. One sentence famously here. Purple represents royalty. What wasn't purple is one shade of the color that has historically been worn by kings, queens, and other elites. Not to mention the many Northwestern alumni who wear it proudly. Don't write that. I might have gotten in with it. I can't promise you you will. Don't write that. I'm a, I'm embarrassed reading this right now. <laughs> I'm actually appalled. But my statement, just at large, was really about why Northwestern was perfect for me. I think it it wasn't very specific to Northwestern. I'll admit that it was specific to me. I'm talking about myself in this essay, which I'm not, I'm not giving you advice or anything. But I just said I want to study abroad here. Guess what? You guys have this country. I didn't even go to Bolivia. I said, I look good in purple. I do. I have purple shoes. I have purple purse. I don't know. I don't know. But we made it, and I'm having a good time here. That's all I have to say. Chloe, here's what I'm going to say in response to that. I tell students all the time. They ask, what am I supposed to write about? What's the best essay topic that you read? What's the perfect resume or list of extracurriculars or transcript that you can submit to get into Northwestern? And the answer to all of that is whatever is most true and authentic for you. So the most compelling applications that we read are the applications where students are true to themselves and we get a sense of their voice. We get an honest look at the ways they've engaged in high school and who they hope to be in college. And that's a great example of that. Like, yes, it's funny to look back on your high school writing and like laugh about how far you've come as a writer since then, but you were true to yourself in that statement. And I bet that our admission committee got a great sense of that across your application. And that's something that's compelling to us. So thank you to all for sharing. And I think that was a, a great story to wrap it up on. In our last few minutes here today, I'd like to share some resources in the chat and just wrap up with a few broader thoughts about the early decision process. And then of course, we'll, we'll give a big thank you to our amazing panelists today. We've had a number of questions continue to come in about financial aid. I know that that is a key priority for most families in the college admission process. So let me share our website here that will provide more information both for international students and students who are in the United States. Again, we have an entirely need-based financial aid program. We do not offer academic merit scholarships, but that process allows us to meet the full extent of a student's demonstrated need and to uh, pr uh, prioritize a loan-free financial aid program. For early decision candidates this year who are applying for need-based financial aid, you will want to prioritize the second of two documents that we require in the financial aid application process. So the first is the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid, and the second document is called the CSS Profile. The FAFSA is typically open about this time every year in the fall, and it is currently delayed. It's going through some updates with the Department of Education, Early decision candidates should uh, complete our calculators, as we indicate online, and submit the CSS profile, and that is what we will use to base a financial aid package um, for you this fall. If you are admitted you will, and you've, you submit that document on time, you will receive a financial aid package with that admission letter. The next resource that I'm going to share is another page of our website, which outlines a lot of these application details that we've talked about um, in greater depth. And one question that has come up several times in the chat is about admission interviews. 
Northwestern has an optional interview component. They are offered on a space available basis by members of our alumni admission council. You are at absolutely no disadvantage in the admission process if you choose not to interview or you unable to interview. Um, those are designed to be more informational experiences, opportunities to connect with another member of the Northwestern community, hear their alumni perspective, and share a little bit more about your interests in Northwestern. So that website will direct you to more information about inter interviews and uh, a host of other aspects of the admission process. And then finally, We've covered a lot of ground today, but your questions suggest there is so much more that you want to dig into, and I think that's fantastic. The best thing that you can do is to continue to engage with current students at Northwestern. So I will share a link uh, with information about visiting campus in person, if that's something that you're able to do, or engaging with us online. Students are available, staff members are available to help with those specific admission questions. We will continue to send resources to students this fall as you are weighing that early decision process. So keep an eye on your inbox in the month of October for more to come. And don't hesitate to reach out to our team if there is anything that we can do to help you learn more about Northwestern and increase that confidence that you should have moving through this process. Um, I'd like to give a big thank you and round of applause virtually to our panelists. Um, if the chat is any indication, you are all stars. I knew that already. Now 500 plus uh, prospective students know it too. Thank you so much for being here and sharing your insight. We sincerely appreciate it. And to all of you on the call, thank you for your interest in Northwestern. I hope you got a sense of who we are today. And that is a diverse and vibrant and collaborative and kind community. What you saw in our students today is true to who we are on campus. Um, and we'd love for you to come and experience that with us. So thank you, take care and enjoy the rest of your days. Bye everyone.